masonry bricks. This is the second part of a masonry. The contents of these slides are everything related with manufacture of bricks, sites, grades, and types of bricks, terminology related with bond joints, and the different type of bricks and masonry walls that we can have. There are several types of bricks and the most common in most of the world are the bricks made from clay. In the south of the United States, concrete bricks are also a very a popular more than the clays, but in most of the world, in the north of the United States, clay bricks are dominant. Bricks are more fire resistant than stone or concrete masonry. Because of the size, they will be modified in small scale. And in large scale constructions, they can provide a beautiful look and a texture. The fact that the brick is small will give a, a little bit more of human scale to the buildings. Bricks usually are made with several types of clays, by like surface clays, shells, and fire clays to get the adequate chemicals and composition for the characteristics that the brick uh, need to have. Usually clays are of two types, calcareous or no calcareous, and that depends on the uh, quantity of calcium carbonate that they have. This calcium carbonate will give like a yellow hue to the brick. Uh, the brick need to be molded, and there are many ways to do it. And one of the possibilities is a very simple one, having like a mold. Well, the um, dirt is extracted from uh, pits and is crushed, power, uh, tempered with water in order to become like more plastic. And after there are molds. Uh, that uh, will help you to give that particular form to the bricks. However, there are other process and, and ways to uh, form a brick. The soft mood process is very simple and similar to the picture that we look uh, here in the corner. Uh, the clay need to be quite moist about 20 to 30% of water and is pressed in a mold. Can be made by hand, can be by a machine. And the mold uh, is deep in water in order to, a uh, dose with sand in order to allow the uh, deer to exit the mold easily. A second type is a dry pressed bricks that are formed with clays that shrink a lot well, we need to put less water in order to have a brick that work better with this type of uh, clays. And usually uh, the quantity of water is just 10%. Well, because that material may contain a lot of um, air inside, it's necessary to press to make it more compact. And the stiff mood process is the most common. Normally, there is 12, between 12 to 15 percent of water, and the idea is to extrude this material through a machine to eliminate all the air, and uh, uh, finally be able to create the, the uh, brick in this way. Usually, what happens is that a, a machine will uh, create a very long uh, brick out of this clay. The brick can have holes inside also, and after you will have like some wire cutters that will be cutting this in pieces. And these kind of bricks are cured in low temperatures before going to a kilns where they are burned. Well, there are several ways to fire the bricks. And usually there is an element that is a kiln that is like an oven uh, there are several types. A periodic clean is the one that is loaded like a, a, a conventional pizza oven. The bricks is just put inside 
and after uh, the process is uh, unload. The continuous one is also like the a new pizza ovens. You have like a small tunnel and the brick will pass and move little by little until the end and at the end it will be ready. It can take a long time to have that particular um, process ready. We can look in this photo uh, a, a tunnel of uh, a, a manufacture of bricks. Adobe bricks are dry in the sun, but other bricks are cooked or burned. And there are several st stages of boiling. Here in the photo, we can look at a kiln that is used to make uh, bricks and tiles in uh, Honduras. And the stage of this process usually is first a water smoking and the hydration of this material. And the temperature is between 400 and 1000 uh, centigrade. Finally, we have also a process of oxidation and vitrification that will make the uh, uh, element strong and is between 10,000 and 30,000 degrees centigrade degree. And the clay will finally become a ceramic material. Sometimes there are other processes like flashing where the file is regulated to create a color or a uh, sometimes it will be applied some other substance to change the material. Finally, the, the brick needs to be cool under some conditions because if it is became cool very fast, it will break and have cracks. Well, all this process can take between 40 to 150 hours. The color of the brick will depend on the chemical composition of the clay, the temperature, and the chemistry of the fire. When we have a dirt and clay, there is iron inside of it, and the iron uh, will become uh, will become like red. And if the fire is reduced, it will become like a purple color. When there is some calcium oxides inside, it can become like a little bit creamy, like more white. And when we need colors that are very bright, it's possible to glaze the brick like a pottery during the normal uh, firing process or in a second firing process. Bricks came with many shapes and there is no a standard size. We have a type of brick that we call standard bricks, but uh, the bricks can be of many uh, size. A normal course of a brick is like three bricks put together, one in the top of the other, plus three uh, areas in the inferior or superior part of the brick where we will have the material that will help to put them together, the mortar. But we can have larger sizes and we can have custom shapes and colors for the brick. Well, in this uh, uh, slide, we can look at the different type of bricks there are a modular brick that is uh, three and a half inches by seven point half by two point one quarter. One quarter. There are the standard brick that is three and a half by eight by two and one quarter. Well, uh, it will be very convenient that you learn uh, these two particular dimensions of bricks because you may need it in the future when you are doing a brick project. There are also other ones that you don't need to memorize the dimensions like engineer, modular standard, plus modular Roman, normal, etc. Uh, all these bricks obviously can be solid, can be corded, can be hollow, frogged. It uh, all depends of the type of bricks that are necessary to do. It's very important that you understand that when you are doing a project made out of bricks, you want to start to uh, have dimensions in the different walls that have a coincidence with the dimension of a brick. If you are using, for example, the typical modular brick with the typical size, uh, if you have a wall, you will try that that wall is um, 
a multiplication of bricks without cutting them, only cutting them in half in order to be able to, to have a one in the top of the other with the connection in the middle between them. What I want to tell is that it's obvious that we want to have a brick here and the other here and the bricks that are up and down want to be in the middle. And in order to do that, we may need to use half bricks. Well, if you are designing a building out of masonry using this type of bricks or any type of brick, can, can be a brick made of, out of concrete, you will start by the corner, let me change color here and put a full brick here Calculate what is the space to put another one. And if you need to open, a, uh, uh, for example, you have a particular, here you have, for example, an opening, a door. Well, you want to make sure when you do this kind of design, that this distance is a multiple of some bricks. In my case, I use four, okay? You can also have half brick for the next type, but you don't want to have here a little piece of brick. It's very important that you really do those kind of calculations and that's why it's good that you learn these two types of bricks and, and know the dimensions of them. Bricks also have grades. There is like a grade that is called SW. There is a grade that is NW, NW, and that depends of the characteristic of the bricks. For example, in some areas where there is like severe weathering, uh, for example, that you have freezing conditions, you may want to have a brick SW that withstand that particular uh, um, strong weather. When you have a moderate weathering, can be a brick MW. And when the, in places that are like more tropical, that is, there is not so much change of temperature, for example, you can have a, a, a brick grade MW. Well, one will be stronger and will be able to support change in weather. Also, the face of the brick will depend of the type of building and the desires of the person that is uh, building. For example, when you want, uh, when you are doing a building that is a corporative one and you want to show like some kind of perfection and no variation, you can use a type FB that means facing brick X that you will have not so more, much variation and the size will be very similar and will look very similar. The FBS is where you have more colors and great variation of size per unit. And finally, the FBA is not uniform and that can be used for some constructions and can look quite well because they have a different texture. Those kind of bricks are usually cheaper. The brick walls will have a strength. And obviously because the bricks is made out of two material, the brick and the element that is between the bricks that is the mortar, well, the strength will be depends of the strength of the masonry unit and the strength of the mortar. Usually it's convenient to have about the same strength. It's no matter to have a very strong brick and use some kind of mortar that is not strong because the wall will break in the places where it's located the, the, the mortar. Also, it's not convenient to have a very strong mortar and use a brick of bad quality. For example, imagine that you have a mortar made out of very strong concrete and uh, you use bricks that are made out of adobe. Well, uh, the, the concrete will stand all the weights, but the adobe will not, where you're losing material because you're putting a very good uh, uh, concrete as a mortar when it's not necessary because that material is not as strong. Well, 
it necessary to have like an equilibrium between the two different materials. There is some terminology that you need to learn. And that terminology is related with elements like bed joints, head joints, collar joints, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there are some description of them. And uh, I would like you guys to read this kind of information and try to learn the terminology. For example, when we have a, a course, is that we have just one brick plus one of the layers, because there are two layers, one up and one down of mortar. Well, you will imagine that the superior one is for, for example, for the brick that is located here where is my mouse, and the other one will be for the other brick that is in the top. Well, each brick will have a bed joint, and the brick plus the bed joint is what is called the course. Uh, also, you will have like horizontal layers of, of bricks every time that will be course one in the top of the other. Also, we have some other things that are important, like the wide, that is a vertical layer of one unit thick. Double wide, that is when you have two elements, one next to the other. We have a, the side of the brick will, will have a name and depending how that side is used in the wall, it can be a stretcher that is here, the blue side, a header where you have only looking the uh, smallest of the side of the brick, a row lock is like here in vertical, a soldier is a brick that is uh, located in the wall like a, a book. Also sailor and shinor. In order to make bonds between the bricks, we will uh, have a, some kind of mortar between them, but also we can have some kind of structural bonds. And the idea is to have like an interlocking or tying of separate masonry units in order to make the project like one example. That is very important in the project that you will be doing of masonry because you're, you want your bricks to have a, a, some kind of location in order to eliminate the possibilities that you have cracks. For example, if I have a, a brick here, this one, and let me change the color with something more bright. Uh, for example, this one, and I put another one here and another one here, I am making this line very long and it may crack, but if it is alternate like here, it may work better because it will be difficult to have that and everything will work like one structural unit. Also, another possibility is to have what is called like a cavity of veneer walls. And that is the following. You will have like a running bone or stacked bone between them in, or in, in, in a way to can create a, that space between a walls. Or you can have the bricks to be just a veneer, an exterior part of what is a wall that is made out of other material. In order to build a brick wall, we will need to lead the corner of the bricks, uh, laying this form in the wall planes. Uh, sometimes you have like a line that will help you to maintain the set uh, horizontality of the elements. And there are set in a row between uh, leads or heavy string stretchers. Uh, when we make these walls, uh, because the bricks have some kind of weight, you can put several uh, bricks, like for example, five, six, seven bricks and start building the wall. But after you need to stop and wait at the wall dry a little bit to continue with the same 
uh, once because the, the material in the middle is allowing you to join the two elements uh, uh, is not dry yet. Also, there is some terminology related with the join tooling. Well, the bricks have joints that uh, is necessary to, to understand how will be the form that they will have. And we have several types of joints here from weather, concave B, et cetera, et cetera. You need to identify them. And in order to do so, there are here some drawings. For example, a, the particular joint between the elements could be extruded, can be like a box ribbon, can be beaded, a grab wine, can be a V. And well, that is uh, what uh, the mes mason decided to do as the joint between the different elements. We can have a flush one that is just um, located between two bricks and the joint made like usually out of some kind of materials with cement uh, is at the same plan. It can be received that is very popular or concave that is also very popular. Also can be weathered like this one that allow the water to go out or struck. That will be how the mortar uh, is a treat in the studio area, the area that we are looking to join. Also, when we have bricks, we want to have, like in any building, openings, and openings are sometimes challenging. Well, the brick walls must be support above the openings for the windows, and sometimes you have concrete lintels, reinforced brick of steels in order to do that. You can have a corbel, that is a device that was used in order to make those kind of bricks and, and help you to have some kind of ornaments provision, or you can have arches that will be used instead of lintels to create a particular spam. You can have different forms of arches that can be built and you have there a list of some of them. Uh, also, we can have a parabolic arches. The type of bricks uh, will depend of the uh, openings also. Um, we have openings that are for windows, for example, and the brick wall must be support in the superior part with some particular elements. Well, we can look here a lintel. We can look there a concrete lintel. One, I will go back, one is made out of bricks that will not be as resistant. Therefore, it's necessary to have like a steel element that is the, the one that is really supporting the weight of the bricks or a concrete one like this. The uh, brick masonry bricks uh, walls can be made of several materials not only with bricks, and they can be reinforced. And it's important to have reinforcement because in some areas where you have earthquakes, it's necessary to, to reinforce the material in order to be used. If not, uh, in seismic areas, bricks can have problems when it's not reinforced. You can also have uh, inside um, some steel, you can have some grout with steel inside. Uh, the grout must be filled to easily go un, un, un into all the narrow cavity, cavities that fill everything. Uh, it's explained that grout is not the same that mortar, are two different things. The ground methods can be a low lift method or a high lift method, and you have the explanation of both of them here. One is the height of the ground filling should not set for feet, and usually there is galvanized steel wires, ties to hold everything together between the whites, or the two walls made out of bricks. 
and there is a high lift method where we have like one story at the time where the wall is all grout together and it's necessary to clean all the holes that are left, eliminate all the debris that the element can have. And the brick and mortar will be used to seal all the holes that you can have between them. For the next um, part, please read all the masonry chapters from 39 to 42 in the test book and practice the problems of this module four. Thank you very much.